I was asked in the comments on one of my other videos um, what the difference between the 22LR dedicated bolt carrier groups and the AR-15 bolt carrier groups and the 22 conversion bolt carrier groups is. And I tried to give an explanation as best I could but I'm not always sure how clear it is to other people because we all have different understandings and levels of experience with um, these parts. So while I can talk for a long time, I'm not always the greatest at explaining things. As Donut Operator says, I'm a visual learner and you're going to be too. So we'll start with a 22LR dedicated bolt carrier group. The biggest difference between the dedicated and the conversion bolt carrier group is this front piece right here. So for the dedicated one, it has this wide open mouth and that goes into the, the barrel slides into that piece. The 22LR conversion bolt carrier groups have a cone on them that looks like a stainless steel uh, 223 cartridge and those are made to be used with a 223 barrel so that when your bolt carrier group engages with the barrel it takes up that chamber that has been cut for a 223 uh, that way when you discharge the firearm that bullet has a straight trajectory into the grooves and everything. It's not just blowing out into an open chamber and losing all of its pressure. I do not have a dedicated 22LR conversion uh, bolt carrier group. So here's a picture of one. And you'll notice that on these, the buffer spring is built into them. These are not like the standard AR-15 and AR-10 bolt carrier groups where you need a buffer weight spring and tube behind these. Uh, these these uh, 22LR bolt carrier groups can go into a receiver that is flat on the back. I mean, this one I showed in another video has the 1913 rail on it. So that can make for a more compact design and obviously the 22LR is not nearly as powerful as the 223, but for plinking, practicing, uh, teaching novice shooters how to shoot, it is a great cartridge. Yeah, it's very affordable, even during the shortage of ammo right now. Uh, <clears throat> as far as the complexity of these, they're, they're pretty simple. Your firing pin sits in right here. When you pull the trigger, you pull the trigger, your hammer comes up. It hits the back side of the firing pin. The firing pin overpowers the spring, comes forward and hits your cartridge to set the round off. Um, you can see that a large portion of this body is a tube on top that has been TIG welded to the main body of the bolt carrier and this is a piece of uh, laser cut steel. Let's see what kind of thickness we're looking at. 0 0.120 inches or Three point oh four millimeters, so the basically three millimeter thick laser cut steel for the uh, guide portion of the body, and that is welded to this back plate and just slides over the body of the bolt carrier. <clears throat> so these are pretty simple. Uh, if you were going to make something like this at home, you you could probably do it with a milling machine, yeah, you know, like a cheap desktop milling machine, fairly easy. Uh, I don't know if you'd have the capability of doing stainless with one of those, but you would be able to uh, do some kind of annealed tool steel and then send it off to be hardened. 
the charging handles on these are a little bit different than the 223 charging handles because they are filled in at the top. Uh, there is only a small groove in the front of them to catch the front of the bolt carrier group and this prevents the 22 cartridges from getting stuck up in here. Your standard <coughs> Your standard AR-15 bolt carrier group is a little bit more complex as it has a gas block that has been uh, screwed and pinned to the bolt carrier group. Not all of them have these grooves in the side for the forward assist, but uh, you know, some people prefer them, some people don't really care. One big thing is the bolt is very different on these, whereas your 22 this part up here is the bolt face it is very simple there's a little notch right here where the extractor comes over and the shell casing just sits right up in there these um, are recessed a little bit and your shell casing actually drops down in there underneath the extractor uh, this the rim of this will sit down in there And when these move forward, they engage with the locking lugs in the barrel. And this will actually twist. This locks into place when it goes forward. And that is to delay the bolt carrier group from moving backwards after the trigger is pulled. Uh, you pull the trigger, hammer sets off the cartridge, uh, all of your gunpowder ignites and it starts propelling everything down the barrel. And as that's happening, it will... Hang on, let's see if I can do this by hand. Nah, I'm not going to be able to get it that way. It will unlock your bolt and send everything backwards. And this is to keep the pressure from inside the chamber from being expelled out into the upper receiver as the gun is discharged. Uh, that would be bad. That could cause an explosion and be a bad day for everybody. So the question was, <clears throat> were there files out there to make these or were there blueprints out there to make these at home because they're not available everywhere. Uh, you can't always buy these in other countries or other states or uh, part shortages or whatever. Now, I'm almost positive that the blueprints for the AR-15 bolt carrier groups are widely available. I haven't looked in quite some time, but um, you know, this is something that you're not going to just go out and buy a block of metal and hand file it and make it functional. Uh, this is something you're you're going to need a little bit of tooling and a somewhat precision machine capabilities to do. Um, I, I think you could do it with a benchtop mill, but again, that's that's dependent on the quality of tooling you can afford and the level of experience you have. <laughs> <clears throat> also, the cost of it, you would need to be buying a kneeled tool steel of some kind. Uh, obviously, for this main body, you'd be buying a round stock and then cutting out large sections of it with either a lathe or milling machine or a combination lathe mill would probably be the easiest for a lot of this and then you would have to send all the parts out to have them hardened and you would need to uh, do research to find out what hardness is acceptable. Um, as far as the dedicated bolts go, the 22LR dedicated bolts and conversion bolts, um, as far as printable parts, that was another part of the question, this front piece is printable. Uh, you, you can find the files online to print the dedicated and the conversion piece and then if you have you know one store-bought bolt carrier group you can switch the nose between the two and use different barrels but I have not tested the 3d printed versions I do not know how durable they are um, obviously they won't be as durable as the metal but you gotta take what you can get sometimes um, 
I don't know. I, I, in my opinion, you could make one of the 22 bolts at home. I don't think it would be terribly hard as compared to something like, you know, an actual AR-15 bolt. But that's just my opinion. And uh, this would be something that you could use if you had one on hand. You could make jigs up, uh, alignment jigs, to where you lay these pieces in here and weld everything in place or you know, uh, use the jigs to hold the bolt body in place while you machine them in the correct locations if you don't have a way of degreeing uh, the round portion of the body. And then, you know, there's ways around everything, shortcuts around everything, but would it be easy to do? No. If you had to do it, could you? Probably. Um, the benefit of doing something like the 22 long rifle would be that you know, uh, maybe in the country you live in, you cannot buy, maybe you can't just go out and buy a barrel liner like we can here in the States when they're in stock, which uh, I finally had one come in. But one good thing about the 22 long rifle is that you can use quarter inch brake line as a barrel liner. Now that would make it smooth bore. You're not going to have the level of accuracy uh, the walls of brake tubing is much thinner, but there are videos of other people using brake line to successfully and repeatedly fire 22 long rifle cartridges. It's obviously not going to be as safe, but if you're living in a country where guns are banned or heavily restricted and you feel the need to have a gun, you are going to have to weigh the pros and cons of the legalities of it as one and the safety of it is the other so you know if you're trying to defend your life and you have to make something out of you know scrap metal and brake lines you know do what you got to do uh, overall I hope this video was helpful in further explaining what my messages couldn't and if you have any further questions you know don't be afraid to ask uh, send me a message on discord or something if you don't want your questions to be public and I'll do the best of my ability to answer them and uh, any of you guys that are in the 3d printing community or the gun community if someone asks you for help don't insult them because they don't know what you know you know treat them with the same respect that you were treated when you learned these things we need to help everybody out and we need to treat each other with respect and equality you're not going to get new members of the gun community by talking down to people Take your time, explain things, help them out the way that you want to be helped. Hope you guys have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you later.